Here we have the worst RC cars of the year 2022. First on the list, the associated MT8. So the little brother to this car, the rival MT10, is cheap, fast, durable, probably the best first RC car, and even for experienced RC people. Steering, like, almost didn't work at all. Look at this, we bashed it, and it just broke every single corner. I've never, ever in my life had an RC car as weak as this. Okay, it is not a good server. It's uncontrollable. Yeah, it doesn't like it. It literally no steering at all. It just doesn't yeah. want to steer. No. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, Jesus, it just doesn't steer. Let's go for a speed run. Oh, my God. Can we crunch? What have you done? Oh, what? Oh. oh, we got breakage. Oh, look. What? How has it broken on both sides? Look, down both sides. I think the hinge pins are made of cheese. Is it the hinge pin or is it the arm? Look that side, the arm's gone. Oh, it's torn through the arm. It's getting it now. <laughs> Stand back, everybody. Oh my God, what? More broke. What, what, what is your expert opinion? Oh no, that bit's broken now. Yeah. That's broken. And something's broken on the front as well. Oh, and that's broken. Definitely getting it now. Oh. No, it's not getting it, it's done. Now, everything that I'm saying in this video is my opinion and from my experience. Some of you other guys might have a different opinion and you might have a different experience and that's fine. Next on the list, the Armour 8S models. Here we got an Outcast, here we got a Creighton. Some people really love these cars. In my opinion, bit of a letdown. So this one here has been severely modified to make it sort of half durable. In stock form, the chassis bend really easily. <laughs> oh, oh, oh <laughs> The arms are like they're made of glass and they just explode. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the steering system is like something from the 80s and it's just meh. Bulkheads, they just seem to strip all the threads out of them like after every run. And they're just so heavy. But then that was just from my experience. Like my buddy Martin, he's got X Maxes and he's got a Creighton 8S. And in, in his opinion, he much prefers the Armour 8S and in his experience it's more reliable so i guess it depends on the individual and i'm not even saying that i don't like it i still enjoy the rc car i mean look at this the sausage this is the most fun or one of the most funs that i've had with an rc car and this is made from an armor creighton 8s and a armor outcast 8s but look at that you know bulkheads broke really easily so you had to put these Viverton heavy duty aluminium ones on there heavy duty arms but yeah so much fun and then wrenching on it again subjective in my opinion really hard to work on these things I always get angry every time I've got a wrench on these things but in other people they think that they're really easy to work on end of the day the best RC car is whichever RC car puts the biggest smile on your face we're going to be saving the best till last I mean worst next up the Rift and it does look really epic and I've made it really epic but as it came out the box I let down so I know it's a rock bouncer but it didn't really do anything out of the box I mean if you tried to go slow and crawl it was just the motor was all cogging and you couldn't go slow with it and then if you try and go fast it was so unstable it just keep falling over <laughs> so if you can't go slow and you can't go fast then what is it for? So anyway, I modified it. So first of all, I took out the standard motor, which was really, really coggy. What I mean by coggy is, is when you put the acceleration on, especially when you're trying to go slow, it can't make its mind up. It's sort of, you know, it's not really going. So I fitted a castle censored motor system. So that's got a lot more low down control and also a two speed transmission. Also, I locked up the differentials because with the open diffs, it was just wheel spinning, not getting traction. So now you put it into low gear and you can crawl it. You can go really, really slowly. Now we can crawl and we can bounce. And then you stick it into high gear and then you can go fast with it as well. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> this thing's epic now. Guys, this car's epic now. This is what it should have been all along. So now is actually a really good RC car. And every time I do a video with it, you know, you guys must like it because it normally gets over a million views. So in stock form, in my opinion, a little bit pointless, modified, absolutely epic. Next up, and it really hurts me to have this car on the list because I really, really love it. And it is actually one of my favorite RC cars, you know, and when it comes to nitro RC cars, it is my favorite RC car. So on the first tank, Look at that, blew a diff, and I didn't even bash it that hard. I mean, I did backflip it. It did land maybe slightly, a little bit on power. <laughs> but all these other cars, they would have just shrugged it off and laughed at it. This just broke way too easily. The gearbox, it doesn't even shift gears. It's got a three-speed transmission. It's just stuck in one gear. <laughs> This whole linkage mechanism here, they came out with this years ago, and it's just troublesome, it's clunky, it jams up, it just doesn't work nicely. Oh, run away! <laughs> Steering servo slow. So once we've sorted it out, we've put in stronger diffs, and we've done all the other little bits and bobs, then definitely, guys, this is going to be my favourite Nitro Basher RC car. Maybe I was unlucky, but I had the same problem with this. The Savage X also doesn't shift gears. Quality control appears to be non-existent. So definitely not hating on HPI. These have been one of my favorite, well, they used to be my favorite basher before the X-Max came out. It's still my favorite Nitro basher. Absolutely love them. They've really got a soft spot in my heart, but they just need to figure out a few of these little niggles and make it a perfect polished product. Guys, you've seen the video. Uh, uh, probably not much more needs to be said. Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> oh! oh! What happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> and a bit there. What? <laughs> oh! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Oh, look, that exploded. Oh, oh, two. oh. how? Um, well, it's made out of that stuff, in it. What do you call it? Cheese. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, we're gonna have to get it fixed again. How? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You're broken here. Oh, oh. Really? yeah, it's, it's and like there. disintegrated. It exploded. So after that video, the company wanted me to send the car back so that they could look over it and see where they went wrong and then sort it out and then I was under impression they're gonna send it back. However, they didn't. So problems with the car, the diffuser and all the side guards, they were made out of this really brittle 3D printed material that just exploded by farting next to it. Oh! The shock absorbers were literally Banggood specials. Well, the car that cost $1,600. I don't think that's acceptable. Servo Saver came, it's like some cheap Chinese Banggood special servo saver. All the suspension arms and all the other components for the most part were all 3D printed and just super weak. They just, just fell to bits. The body, it, it just disintegrated. Now this here is only the body because you know they wanted the car back and supposedly sort the car out but they put a post up on their Facebook page that now in future they are not gonna be sending these cars to YouTubers. They're gonna do their own testing and they're gonna do their own videos. So now, they have actually said that they've sorted out all the problems with the car, and that now the car is good to go. So I can't comment on that, because I've not had the car back. But from what I've seen, it, uh, I'm gonna let you guys make your mind up. So price tag, almost $1,600. By the time you add a radio and batteries, it's gonna be way over that. If it's gonna be $1,600, it better be like the best car in its class. Now I would say this is probably in the same sort of class as like an armory infraction. However, this 
is $650. You can almost buy three of these, or you could buy one of those. For that to warrant almost a 3x price difference, it has to be better in some way. Either it's got to be faster, it's got to handle better, it's got to be more durable. It has to be better in some way. Because if it isn't, then... Why would you buy it? So, I've made up a little list here. So, Mammoth, almost $1,600 by the time you get a radio. In fraction, $650. Speed, this car here is supposed to do 60 mile an hour. In fraction, 80 plus mile an hour. Some people have got 100 mile an hour out of the stock car with just a gearing change. Handling, hands down on the infraction. This thing, I mean, it's hard to, contr it's hard to control. The throttle is just doesn't feel, it just feels like, on and off the brakes are on and off it's just all or nothing it just doesn't seem to drive nice like at all the infraction just handles amazingly you can hoon it around you can flash it you can do burnouts it's durable so next one yep durability durable uh Upgradeability. There's so many upgrades that you can get for these armors. So, for example, I'm building like the Project World's fastest RC car, which is based on one of those. So, you know, you can build this and you can buy the spares and you can turn it almost into anything that you like. People have turned these into off-road buggies and bashed the living head out of them and they're still durable. This, you fart and that happens. And then the main factor, fun. You know, and the best RC car is whichever RC car puts the biggest smile on your face. <laughs> That's fun for me, man. I've got tears coming out of my eyes. And guys, it may sound like I'm hating on this car. I'm really not. The concept absolutely epic you know the idea of four motors one in each wheel with no transmission i mean as a prototype absolutely amazing the concept absolutely amazing but it's just a prototype you know they were actually selling this car if you bought this car and that happened you, you would not be happy you know and i've been speaking with a few friends and people said kev don't do a video. It's not really fair on the company to do a video like that. You could just ruin the company. In my eyes, my loyalty lies with you guys. You know, I could just not say anything and keep quiet, but then I feel like I'm doing a disservice to you guys. You know, my loyalty lies with you guys, the viewers. So if I've had a product and my experience was bad, I feel obliged that I have to share that experience with you. Now, you know, they said they've sorted out the problems. They said it's no longer a prototype. It, the final version's out. The new version's good. They, they said it's durable now. It, it's, it, everything's good. And, you know, maybe it is, but I can't comment on it because I haven't had it. But even if they've sorted out all those problems, in my opinion, to justify this price tag, it has to be better than the infraction in some way. You know, if it's faster, all right, maybe. If, if the handling's better, if the durability's better, if it's more fun. <laughs> if, if it has one thing better than this, you might be able to justify that price point. Because the version that I had, if I'd have paid $200 from Banggood, I would have still felt hard done by. I've also done another video with my favorite RC cars that you can buy in the year 2022. And I'm gonna put a link to that video somewhere here. <laughs>